What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Undrafted Views. We're here. We talk sports from the sidelines. And today we're going to talk about the New Orleans Pelicans. Yes, the New Orleans Pelicans. We kind of like them too. So we're going to cover what we know about the team and what we suggest they do for the upcoming NBA season. Let's get into it. The New Orleans Pelicans went 30 and 42 last season under the old coach in Alvin Gentry. They have since hired coach Stan Van Gundy to take them to new heights. Do you think that was a good move? Yeah, I guess Alvin Gentry wasn't getting it done. So, I mean, why not at this point? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I mean, not? it remains to be seen and I, I'm exactly. looking forward to it. But, you know, what we know about the Pelicans is they have a very young core. I mean, you have Lonzo Ball at point guard. Um, this will only be his third year in the league. Uh, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, J.J. Redick. They've included Eric Bledsoe. Um, Derek Favors has left the building, and they have Jackson Hayes. <laughs> right. So they have a pretty good young core, and what we need is to see them all together for a full season. Yes, full season. Zion only played 24 games last season. So um, without really seeing him, which people has dubbed him as a generational talent, mm -hmm. in order to really see that unfold and see how durable that is, he needs to play more games. And so hopefully, you know, he'll do that. Once that core uh, plays more games together, then let's see what they'll do. But mm -hmm. you know, the, hope, the, the sky's the limit for them, but they just need Zion to be healthy and to really get in there and then, you know, just play the most games he can play. And until they do that, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I, I forgot to mention Eric Bledsoe, who has, you know, joined the Pelicans here in free agency. Mm -hmm. I think he was a pretty good pickup. I was a little concerned about what his role will be because, you know, coming from the Milwaukee Bucks, he was their point guard, mm -hmm. their starting point guard at that. And so we know that the Pelicans already have a point guard in Lonzo Ball. So there's only another option is to have him play the two, which I guess is OK. I mean, you know, we'll see what he does and how he gels with the team. But Eric Bledsoe is not a bad uh, trade acquisition, but I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about their depth chart now that they have all their pieces. I don't mm -hmm. really foresee them picking up anybody else. Um I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, they're very creative at this time. So at point guard, I suspect Alonzo Ball will be the lead, will be the starter. Absolutely. You know, his backup might be Kieran Lewis Jr., who they drafted in yeah. the 2020 NBA draft. And then if needed, Eric Bledsoe can also play the point. We've yeah. seen that. Yes. As shooting guard, I'm expecting Eric Bledsoe to be the starter. There's also J.J. Redick who can back him up and who's lights out from the three. And then small forward. Your boy, Brandon Ingram, should be the starter. Can we just put some respect on Brandon Ingram's name? He is the most, right now, the most impactful player on the Pelicans team. And mm -hmm. it just boggles me why the discussion about him in the media is not as prevalent as it is between Zion and Lonzo. Ooh, that Lonzo and Zion pairing? No. Put some respect on Brandon Ingram's name. He was the top scorer in their last season. Excuse me. I'm just saying... Brandon Ingram is an integral part of their team. Brandon Ingram is nice to watch and he plays very well. Please know that he is someone that needs to be talked about just as much as the rest of them. And without Zion, I mean, excuse me, without Brandon Ingram, where would the Pelicans be? Mm -mm. Zion ain't there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, oh, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. So yes, Brandon Ingram, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then back in, back in band, Brandon up at um, small forward is Josh Hart. You know, he gets thrown into the abyss as well. I think he's a solid talent. Um, and then power forward, we got Zion, of course, okay. Kendrick. And then Brandon Ingram can back him up. And then mm -hmm. at center, their newest acquisition is Steven Adams. I yes. suspect he'll be the starting center. And then Jackson Hayes can back him up at center. I can so. see that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can't bring him over with his experience and have him come off the bench. It doesn't make sense to me. So, yes, Stephen Adams, mm -hmm. that's not a bad acquire from them. I think it'll work. Um, they need someone since they had to, they traded Derek Favor. So, why not have somebody mm -hmm. else come in? And that Jackson Hayes guy, right? Because that's the one that's going to be the center. 
That's the yeah. backup center. Yeah, he's a rookie. So you still need someone with the Steven Adams experience to help shape and mold him to, you know, be his future center self. So I, th I think it's fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's I, the Pelicans look great. I know. They really, really do look great. I don't know if they would acquire any more talent to their team, but right now what they have appears to be solid. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so Lonzo Ball is uh, in his third year. As I mentioned, he played 63 games for the Pelicans. He averaged about 11 points, six rebounds, and seven assists. 37% from the arc, which was his claim to fame, but he's only shooting 37%. And he's a horrible free throw shooter at 56%. I'm just not impressed with Lonzo right now. I'm so happy that they acquired a rookie in Kerry Lewis Jr. And he has a lot of promise. So if Lonzo, hey, you know what? If Lonzo does not perform well, mm -hmm. I suspect Stan Van Gundy will slide in the rookie as at point guard. And Lonzo will have to watch from the bench. <gasps> Ooh, I wonder mm -hmm. if the Pelicans fans would be upset with that. Because, you know, Alonzo have some really diehard fans and they really um, stand for his level of play. So I'm wondering if the fan base would appreciate. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on if they're losing or winning. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, it was they needed to have someone as a backup. And, you know, Alonzo can somewhat be a little bit injury prone. So they needed someone else. And then with Eric Bledsoe being able to be in the mix, too, I think they have a great mm -hmm. um, resource that they can use to cover Alonzo if for some reason they need to sit him down and or he just needs to take a break. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of taking a break, uh, Zion Williamson played 24 games last season, averaged 22.6 rebounds, two assists, shot 42% from three and 64% from the free throw line. His stats look good. Yeah. What doesn't look good is the fact that he played 24 games. I, I'm telling you, it, it blew me away to know how efficient he was when he was playing the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but your success will only be based on your availability. And if you are not available to play, right, then your team and your contribution to its success won't be there. That is the biggest key point takeaway from me when it comes to Zion. If yep. Do you have what it takes based on these numbers? Absolutely. The problem is you're not available. <laughs> So I can't do anything with you not being there. And that's, for me, the biggest gap in the Pelican success is that Zion Williamson, for this past, his first year in the league, he was not there. So yeah, it's terrible. But, you know, Brandon Ingram, he's super durable, played 62 games, averaged 23.6 rebounds, four assists, shot 40 percent from three. And he's a really good free throw shooter, 85 percent. Really good. That's what I'm mm. saying. So um, when I when you mention Zion, I'm gonna need for y'all to make sure y'all follow up that same conversation with Brandon Ingram. I'm gonna need mm -hmm. for him to always be on top of mind for people because he is right now carrying, or he did last season, he carried the Pelicans. Yep. Sure did. There's no bones about it. And they if they're smart, they better go ahead and sign him to a max deal. They will want to. So can mm -hmm. you imagine? based off of Zion's performance in his 24 games, along with Brandon Ingram's production, and then the assist um, skills from Lonzo, uh, Alonzo Ball, all of that together with mm -hmm. the complimentary pieces of your Eric Bledsoe's and now yeah. your Stephen Adams and, you know, and then your, your, your new rookie and what's his name? Um, Kara Lewis Jr. If you bring all of them together, come on. Yeah. Pelican, next season will be something to really watch. And they will most definitely secure a spot in the plan. Totally secure a spot in the plan. Only the plan. You don't think he'll be? They'll be solid in the one through one six. through six at least. At yeah. least. I don't know yet. The West is hard. Ooh, I don't know yet. I can't say that today. But what I can say is, I can most definitely see them being a part of a playing tournament. That I can't say. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. So moving down the list, Josh Hart. He's one of my favorites. I think he's yeah. gritty. He's tough. He's a really good defender. It's his third year. He's durable. He played 65 games last season. Um, average 10.6 rebounds, 34% from the three-pointer. And he's an average free throw shooter at uh, 73%. I like him. 
Yeah. So why can't he be a part of the sixth man of the year? Where was he? Is it because the Pelicans don't, they didn't do enough, you know, um, to even warrant the, the voters of the sixth man of the year to consider him? Cause he yeah. be in the, I mean, I don't know. So maybe what he should be striving for, since he may not be a starter, is trying to become six man of the year for the next NBA season. Mm -hmm. I think the whole six man of the year is like popularity. You know, oh, right. Rez and, and Lou Williams, they had it sold up for the last couple of years. They play in a big market. I mean, yeah. was anybody checking for New Orleans? No. You yes, they, yeah, actually they were. Yeah, they were checking for New Orleans by way of Zion Williamson. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, but when he went out, people stopped checking. Oh, Mm -hmm. Okay. Point taken. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 So in terms of uh, three point shooting, you got JJ Reddick, who's lights mm -hmm. out from three. Mm -hmm. uh, he played 60 games, average 15 points. And he's a 90% free throw shooter. You know, surprisingly, he shot 45% from three. So he's making almost five out of 10. Almost. He can improve that some. Yeah. 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 Perhaps under this new coach. Mm -hmm. It'd be different, right? So there's a couple of things that New Orleans is dealing with that they are going to be dealing with. They're going to be dealing with the change in leadership. Now they have Stan Van Gundy when last year they had Alvin Gentry. So that's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. And their expectations will be a lot different as well. And then now they also have some new players. So now trying to get all that together within the next week or so. Basically, basically, <laughs> it's gonna be something that Stan Van Gundy's gonna have to really work hard for. But I think once he figure out what that is for his team, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Yeah, play in here, y'all come absolutely. <laughs> you and this play in, oh my god! Yeah, you know what? Let's just be honest. You got two choices this season, right? Either you're gonna be a solid um, playoff uh, team between one and six, or you're gonna be a solid play in tournament team between seven and ten. You pick your spot. Yeah, you do not want to be between seven and ten. You don't want to be you between seven get, and ten. Yeah, you will be. You will end up like Memphis last season. Absolutely, that's what yep. I'm saying. So teams need. So we, when we talk about, you know, before we got to make it, you know, want to be one of the eighth seeds. No, you don't. You want to mm -hmm. be one of the six seeds because if you are the eighth seed, then you're gonna have to continue to play hard. Yeah. So I think that's their core. Um, Stephen Adams, his acquisition, he makes twenty seven million dollars a year. But he's going to give you solid defensive presence. He averages 10 points, 11 rebounds. He's six foot 11, 265 pounds. I mean, just strong. He's like a brick wall. He's He'll be good in the pick and roll. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if he has great um, perimeter shooting. I think I read no, that where he doesn't, he doesn't really do that. But you know what, though? He don't have to. Mm -mm. He can they be like that guards. Guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. They have what enough happened? guards to um to take care of all the perimeter shooting. Yeah. He can just yeah. stay down low yep. and bang. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, I'm here for the New Orleans Pelicans next year. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Zion. Yeah. It's all on you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Zion, you know, I do think this year will be his year to break out. I hope so. I think this year he will live up to the hype that surrounded him since probably high school through Duke mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now here with the Pelicans first pick overall in last year's yeah. draft. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on the young man, uh -huh. but I think uh -huh. this is his year. Yeah. Next he season. came into the league injured, had an injury when he was playing. Um, I think it was with Duke where he blew out the shoe and, you know, so he came in already injured and then he injured himself again. You know, he had a lot of lingering injuries. So hopefully with the time off, Right. With the proper training and the proper physical um, therapy, rehabilitation and a proper diet. I'm going to need for him. Not hey, this is no and by no means do I have a problem with anybody being any size. I'm just saying for him to run up and down the court, he has to get lose some weight. I'm just going to call it what it yeah. is. And if he does, he'll be able to sustain the fast paced game that's happening right now. You don't want to be winded. Teams will eat you up if mm -hmm. you are not a team that cannot keep up with the pace. And him being a rookie, not a rookie, excuse me, him being in the second year with the uh, claim of generational talent that's been put upon him, he's going to have to really work up his physical stamina and it's just going to have to happen. So, I mean, in terms of what we suggest, you know, for the Pelicans moving into the next season. We covered some of our suggestions, but I think it's important to note that Stan Van Gundy wants to play small ball. So in keeping with what you said about Zion's stamina, 
he's definitely going to have to work on his body. There were some reports that uh, Zion has transformed his body this off season. Oh, so I can't so, wait to see. Uh-huh. Yep. And then uh, I think the in terms of their three-point shooting, I know they have J.J. Redick, I mean, Brandon Ingram. Zion is actually a really good uh, three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of that is because he was like kind of winded and heavy and he didn't want to like, you know, run back and down as much. So he would just stop right there and shoot. <laughs> right, right. Which is a great, which is great for him to have um, Stephen Adams come in to kind of help with that. Mm -hmm. Now, Derek Favors, he's not there anymore. So now they have Stephen Adams. So maybe that'll help him. I think that um, they need to work a little bit more on their defense. You need some type of defense strategy to help make stops. And I think that they can work a little bit more on that. And if they were to incorporate, and Eric Bledsoe is really good, because as a matter of fact, Eric Bledsoe adds some of that defensive um, strategy that they need to add to the Pelicans core to help them um, achieve their next level. So it's needed, some type of defense, some form of improved defense, I would say they need. Uh, okay. You know what? I need to mention that um, the Pelicans were extremely gutsy and bringing on Teresa Weatherspoon. Come on. From the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hiring her on the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Special shout out to Teresa. I mean, I think that's great. I think the NBA has not only included her, but other WNBA players, you know, Swin Cash, you got uh, Ivy, you know, they're all on the coaching staff with various NBA teams. And that would have never happened even six years ago. That would have yeah. never happened. So it's good. We're seeing some some progression. And I'm happy about that. Thank you. You got a long way to go, NBA. Yeah. But, hey, thank you for now. <laughs> thank and you. Let's keep it going. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <Woman power. laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you know what? That wraps up um, our episode on the New Orleans Pelicans, what we know and what we suggest for them for the next season. I'm looking forward. Overall, I think the Pelicans look really good. They should be very exciting to watch. And if uh, we can get Zion and the whole crew to finish a whole season, I think you picked them in the play in. I actually see them somewhere around five in the West. What? Yeah. <laughs> How? 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 Just because I think they're going to be playing at a really fast pace and they're going to be outscoring a lot of teams who like to just like the Spurs or, or, you know, even, even, um, even Denver, I think Denver needs to up their pace. So, you know, we might see right. something in Portland. I'm not impressed with the moves that Portland has made. So that allows new Orleans to potentially move up. I picked them at five in the West. What? I mm -hmm. can't. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, guess what we'll be doing? Watching them. <laughs> just yep. seeing if they can make it there. Oh, hey, I'm here for it. I don't see it, but okay. You yeah. know, again, I don't see it because I'm all contingent on whether Zion can make it happen. So, <laughs> but okay. All right. All right. It's a deal. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, make sure if you like this kind of content that you go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you engage us in the comments. Let us know if you agree. What type of suggestions do you have for the Pelicans moving into the new season? Yes. And uh, we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, <laughs> peace, y'all.